So bees are a wonderful group of insects that are thoroughly deserving of conservation in their own right. But they also provide this fantastic and free service of pollination. So when a bee visits um, a flower that we uh, consume the product of in some way, either a fruit or a vegetable or nuts or oils, um, we can measure that value to agriculture. In Ireland that's 53 million euro per annum. But they also visit a whole variety of other wildflowers, shrubs and trees. Uh, again within Ireland over three quarters of our plants require bee pollination for the reproduction. So they maintain effectively our terrestrial ecosystems. So not only are they thoroughly deserving of conservation in their own right, they provide this essential ecosystem service of pollination. So what type of bees do we have in Ireland? Well, we have 99 different types of bee in Ireland, 77 of which are solitary bees, one of which is the honeybee, which most people immediately think of when they think of bees, but we also have 21 bumblebee species. So with our bumblebees, they're cold adapted species, they're the big, fat, hairy bees that you see flying about, uh, particularly in springtime when you see the really large queens, but the really, really big hairy ones that you see on flowers, they're our bumblebees. So how are they doing? I mean, we're very conscious at the moment of declines in honeybee populations, but I think what has really gotten out there now, primarily driven with the pollinator plan and, and, and similar uh, uh, initiatives worldwide, is that our wild bee populations aren't doing too well too. We effectively found that over half our species have dramatically declined since the 1980s. And out of our 99 species, one third of them are currently under threat of extinction. And then more specifically with our bumblebees, out of the 20 bumblebees that we had at the time, we now have 21, um, out of the 20 bumblebees that we had at the time, six are under threat of extinction, with another three uh, falling within a near threatened category. So almost half our bumblebees are also under threat of extinction. So um, again, it's of significant concern. It isn't just media hype. We're genuinely concerned about how our bumblebees are doing in Ireland. So there are loads of ways of reversing these declines in bees, and they're all outlined within the All-Ireland Pollinator Plan and the sectoral guidelines and all those really detailed how-to guides, um, all available to download from pollinators.ie. But in parallel to all those interventions to uh, reverse these declines, we also need a really good way of measuring how our bees are doing each year. So in how many wild bees are flying in the Irish landscape each year. And that's where the bumblebee monitoring scheme slots in. So the scheme itself would have been uh, trialled in 2011. And it was the first field season in 2012 with 28 brave souls um, across 36 sites. And it has now grown to uh, 78 people across 102 sites across Ireland. So it's, it's fantastic. I think last year we recorded over uh, 13,000 um, individual bumblebees and another 4,000 honeybees actually along with that too. But there are still many parts of Ireland where we don't have anybody monitoring and we really don't know how those populations are doing. So we really do need more help. We need more people out there actually helping us monitor those bees because it's the only way we'll have a, a, a good measure of how our bees are doing every single year, how many bees are flying in the landscape. So what is monitoring? How do we do it? Well, overall, it's walking a fixed route over known time and then repeating that walk every month from April until October. So it's around eight walks per year. So when you want to get into bumblebee monitoring, we're really only asking for eight hours of your time every single year. Step one, a really basic one, is get to know your bumblebees. Learning their identification is really the very first step in long, uh, actually becoming a fully fledged bumblebee monitor. And so the easiest way of doing that is just getting out straight away and having a look at what bees are in your garden or in around you. Um, we have a whole variety of resources again for free to download from the pollinators.ie website. Um, we even give um, all the slides that we typically present at our identification workshops. All those slides again are freely available to download from our website. Um, also from the Biodiversity Ireland online shop we have an identification swatch, a bumblebee identification swatch, that can help you too. So we also run um, a series of free workshops every single year teaching people exactly that, how to identify bumblebees and how to monitor them too. So just keep a look on our uh, uh, pollinators.ie, the events webpage there, and you'll see if there's a, a workshop near you that you'd like to come along to. After that, it's just yourself, get out. Uh, we typically find those who do best are those who go out and maybe catch and release a lot. And again, we can show you how to do that without harming yourself or harming the bee. But it's ultimately having a container, at least three quarters full of tissue paper, and catching a bee, having a decent look, maybe even taking a photograph, 
and then letting the bee go. So either catching and releasing quite a lot or taking lots of photographs are the two best ways of really accelerating your skill with bumblebees. So step two then is actually deciding, well, okay, I'd like to do monitoring, so where am I going to walk? And for us, you can choose anywhere you'd like. Now, I would suggest you take, again, a quick look at the website and see if there's anybody walking very close to you. It would be great if we could try and space people out so there's not so much overlap between walks. You can walk anywhere, and if you have a particular route that you enjoy walking, and we really emphasize that, we want people to uh, go somewhere they already like walking, and then you just add bumblebee identification onto it, or bumblebee monitoring onto it, and it just increases your enjoyment. So it's never a chore, it's just something that adds to your enjoyment of walking. Choose somewhere that you enjoy, and also somewhere that's convenient. Again, the convenience is important, because that way you will be able to run out when the weather suits and actually be able to do the bumblebee monitoring scheme too. So enjoyment and convenience. For us, the only criteria then we really insist on is that that walk is at least one kilometre in length. So something that you can do in roughly around 45 minutes or an hour, or a lunch break if you're working. Then we ask you to break it up into different sections. Typically five sections, but maybe up to 15. And so the way that works is, okay, section one of my walk would be from my front door, around my garden, and maybe to, to the gate. Uh, section two then would be from the gate down to the corner of the road. Section three then would be down the road, down a small little laneway, and then across a field. So you break up the sections into areas of relatively homogeneous habitats or you know, broad areas that are similar to each other and break it up accordingly. Then step three is, once you've identified your route, um, is to tell us about it. So on the pollinators.ie website, there's a section for the bumblebee monitoring scheme. So you can go in there, there's a big button saying get involved and all the details about how to register are within there. So when you're registering your walk, uh, we just need specific details, so you can give a name to your walk if you want to call it a particular thing. Um, there's a map provided, so you can tell us specifically where the centre of your walk is. and um, You tell us about the length of your walk. But most importantly is you have an opportunity there to draw specifically in every single section of your walk. So we know where you start and where you finish for every single section. After that then, it's just getting out there and monitoring your bumblebees. And then once you have that online account with us, it's going back to that account every single month and putting in your Bumblebee records directly into that account. So we have that central registry of everything that you're seeing along your walk. So when we go out and we start monitoring, we're actually monitoring within a five meter cube, like an imaginary box. And it's a standard method used in pollard walks or these standard walks for uh, monitoring insect populations. And so as you walk along, you're imagining that two and a half meters either side of you, and then roughly five meters in front and five meters above, you're recording all the bumblebees that come in within that imaginary box. The aim then is to walk at an even pace. So you don't want to go too slowly in particular sections or too fast in other sections. Just try and keep in or maintain a very even pace. And then also then to be as consistent as possible across months and then hopefully across years too. So we can, every single month, uh, the records that you have are comparable, one, along your walk, but also to everybody else's walk too, who are all following exactly the same standardised protocol. To help you at the start, we have these particular forms, these weekly recording forms that you can download from the website. And on these forms, it really just helps you, uh, it teaches you the discipline of sort of systematically recording insects for these walks. Because on the form, we ask you for the time that you start, the time that you finish, um, the date, uh, the average temperature, the time that you're walking, the average wind speed, there's a little uh, uh, Beaufort wind scale there that you can fill out, um, and the average wind direction. And then for each section, you're going out recording all the species that you saw in each section, and the number of each of those species that you saw, the number of individuals of each species, and also whether they were male, queens, or workers. And we find that those forms are really useful at the start to get people into the discipline of monitoring uh, bumblebees. But after maybe three or four months, people just prefer to take out a small notebook and that's just fine. It's just good at the start to get into that sort of discipline of taking down all those different details that we need to know each time you go out walking. After that then, the only other tip I can give is at the start, I'd suggest catch and release frequently. So again, you don't have to have an insect net. If you have a large vessel, or again, like a jam jar, that you fill three quarters full of tissue paper, just getting a bee into that jar allows you to have a decent look. After that then, if you're really good with a the smartphone, you can take a photograph. 
The advantage again of a photograph is that you can look at it at a computer screen when you get home and look at it really large and have a really detailed look. And again, if you're still not sure, then you can post that up on our Facebook page or you can email us directly. And we can identify it for you and then gives you some additional pointers then when you go back outside um, looking for bumblebees. On average within Ireland, we typically only have six species in any one location. So it can go up to 14 in some of the really good sites, but that's a rarity. So for you as a bumblebee recorder, it's just really getting to know those six core species well. And then once you do get to know them, those rarer species will be much easier to identify. So it's a very accessible group of insects to learn if you want to get into insect monitoring in any way. And again, there's nothing better to just getting outside and giving it a go. And at the start, you're going to get it right and you're going to get it wrong. But at least you're outside and you're helping us monitor these very important insects. Thank you.